The Six Swans. Author, Jacob Grimm and Wilhelm Grimm. Illustrator, Walter Crane. Once upon a time, a king was hunting in a great wood, and he pursued a wild animal so eagerly that none of his people could follow him. When evening came he stood still, and looking around him he found that he had lost his way, and seeking a path, he found none. Then all at once, he saw an old woman with a nodding head coming up to him, and it was a witch. My good woman, said he, can you show me the way out of the wood? Oh yes, my lord king, answered she, certainly I can, but I must make a condition, and if you do not fulfill it, you will never get out of the wood again but die there of hunger. What is the condition? Asked the king. I have a daughter, said the old woman, who is as fair as any in the world, and if you will take her for your bride, and make her queen, I will show you the way out of the wood. The king consented, because of the difficulty he was in, and the old woman led him into her little house, where her daughter was sitting by the fire. She received the king just as if she had been expecting him, and though he saw that she was very beautiful, she did not please him, and he could not look at her without an inward shudder. Nevertheless, he took the maiden before him on his horse, and the old woman showed him the way, and soon he was in his royal castle again, where the wedding was held. The king had been married before, and his first wife had left seven children, six boys, and one girl, whom he loved better than all the world, and as he was afraid the stepmother might not behave well to them and perhaps would do them some mischief, he took them to a lonely castle standing in the middle of a wood. There they remained hidden, for the road to it was so hard to find that the king himself could not have found it, had it not been for a clue of yarn possessing wonderful properties, that a wise woman had given him, when he threw it down before him, it unrolled itself and showed him the way. And the king went so often to see his dear children, that the queen was displeased at his absence, and she became curious and wanted to know what he went out into the wood for so often alone. She bribed his servants with much money, and they showed her the secret and told her of the clue of yarn, which alone could point out the way, then she gave herself no rest until she had found out where the king kept the clue and then she made some little white silk shirts, and sewed a charm in each, as she had learned witchcraft of her mother. And once when the king had ridden to the hunt, she took the little shirts and went into the wood, and the clue of yarn showed her the way. The children seeing someone in the distance thought it was their dear father coming to see them, and came jumping for joy to meet him. Then the wicked queen threw over each one of the little shirts, and as soon as the shirts touched their bodies, they were changed into swans and flew away through the wood. So the queen went home very pleased to think she had got rid of her stepchildren but the maiden had not run out with her brothers, and so the queen knew nothing about her. The next day the king went to see his children, but he found nobody but his daughter. Where are thy brothers? Asked the king. Ah, dear father, answered she, they are gone away and have left me behind, and then she told him how she had seen from her window her brothers in the guise of swans fly away through the wood, and she showed him the feathers which they had let fall in the courtyard, and which she had picked up. The king was grieved, but he never dreamt that it was the queen who had done this wicked deed, and as he feared lest the maiden also should be stolen away from him, he wished to take her away with him. But she was afraid of the stepmother and begged the king to let her remain one more night in the castle in the wood. Then she said to herself, I must stay here no longer, but go and seek for my brothers. And when the night came, she fled away and went straight into the wood. She went on all that night and the next day until she could go no longer for weariness. At last, she saw a rude hut and she went in and found a room with six little beds in it, she did not dare to lie down in one, but she crept under one and lay on the hard boards and wished for night. When it was near the time of sunsetting she heard a rustling sound and saw six swans come flying in at the window. They alighted on the ground and blew at one another until they had blown all their feathers off, and then they stripped off their swan skin as if it had been a shirt. And the maiden looked at them and knew them for her brothers, and was very glad, and crept from under the bed. The brothers were not less glad when their sister appeared, but their joy did not last long. You must not stay here, said they to her, this is a robber's haunt, and if they were to come and find you here, they would kill you. And cannot you defend me? Asked the little sister. No, answered they, for we can only get rid of our swan skins and keep our human shape every evening for a quarter of an hour, but after that, we must be changed again into swans. Their sister wept at hearing this, and said, can nothing be done to set you free? Oh no, answered they, the work would be too hard for you. For six whole years, you would be obliged never to speak or laugh and make during that time six little shirts out of aster flowers. If you were to let fall a single word before the work was ended, all would be of no good. And just as the brothers had finished telling her this, the quarter of an hour came to an end, and they changed into swans and flew out of the window. But the maiden made up her mind to set her brothers free, even though it should cost her her life. She left the hut, and going into the middle of the wood, she climbed a tree and there passed the night. The next morning she set to work and gathered asters and began sewing them together, as for speaking, 
there was no one to speak to, and as for laughing, she had no mind to it, so she sat on and looked at nothing but her work. When she had been going on like this for a long time, it happened that the king of that country went a-hunting in the wood, and some of his huntsmen came up to the tree in which the maiden sat today. They called out to her, saying, Who art thou? But she did not answer. Come down, cried they, we will do thee no harm. But she only shook her head. And when they tormented her further with questions she threw down to them her gold necklace, hoping they would be content with that. But they would not leave off, so she threw down to them her girdle, and when that was no good, her garters, and one after another everything she had on and could spare until she had nothing left but her smock. But all was no good, the huntsmen would not be put off any longer, and they climbed the tree, carried the maiden off, and brought her to the king. The king asked, Who art thou? What wert thou doing in the tree? But she answered nothing. He spoke to her in all the languages he knew, but she remained dumb, but, being very beautiful, the king inclined to her, and he felt a great love rise up in his heart towards her, and casting his mantle around her, he put her before him on his horse and brought her to his castle. Then he caused rich clothing to be put upon her, and her beauty shone as bright as the morning, but no word would she utter. He seated her by his side at the table, and her modesty and gentle means so pleased him, that he said, this maiden I choose for wife, and no other in all the world, and accordingly after a few days, they were married. But the king had a wicked mother, who was displeased with the marriage and spoke ill of the young queen. Who knows where the maid can have come from? Said she, and not able to speak a word. She is not worthy of a king. After a year had passed, and the queen brought her first child into the world, the old woman carried it away and marked the queen's mouth with blood as she lay sleeping. Then she went to the king and declared that his wife was an eater of human flesh. The king would not believe such a thing and ordered that no one should do her any harm. And the queen went on quietly sewing the shirts and caring for nothing else. The next time that a fine boy was born, the wicked stepmother used the same deceit, but the king would give no credence to her words, for he said. She is too tender and good to do any such thing, and if she were only not dumb, and could justify herself, then her innocence would be as clear as day. When for the third time the old woman stole away the newborn child and accused the queen, who was unable to say a word in her defense, the king could do no other but give her up to justice, and she was sentenced to suffer death by fire. The day on which her sentence was to be carried out was the very last one of the sixth year of the years during which she had neither spoken nor laughed, to free her dear brothers from the evil spell. The six shirts were ready, all except one which wanted the left sleeve. And when she was led to the pile of wood, she carried the six shirts on her arm, and when she mounted the pile and the fire was about to be kindled, all at once she cried out aloud, for six swans were coming flying through the air and she saw that her deliverance was near, and her heart beat for joy. The swans came close up to her with rushing wings, and stooped around her so that she could throw the shirts over them, and when that had been done the swan skins fell off them, and her brothers stood before her in their bodies quite safe and sound, but as one shirt wanted the left sleeve, so the youngest brother had a swan's wing instead of a left arm. They embraced and kissed each other, and the queen went up to the king, who looked on full of astonishment, and began to speak to him and to say, Dearest husband, now I may dare to speak and tell you that I am innocent, and have been falsely accused, and she related to him the treachery of the stepmother, who had taken away the three children and hidden them. And she was reconciled to the king with great joy, and the wicked stepmother was bound to the stake on the pile of wood and burnt to ashes. And the king and queen lived many years with their six brothers in peace and joy. The End Goodbye